the universe out of this soup of energy created one extra matter particle for every hundred million particles that it made. And so in the dance off, mm -hmm. all the pairs go away. So that's annihilation, and, annihilation, and, annihilation, annihilation, annihilation. And, and there's one person left. It's got nobody to annihilate with. Right. That is everything we know and love in this universe that we call matter. All matter. Yes. From that one. Wait. Yeah. Yes. All matter. Yes. So Harry, why did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I wish I could claim responsibility for the existence of the universe. There was a Russian physicist back in the 70s, I think, called Andrei Sakharov, who came up with three conditions to allow matter to win this battle with antimatter in the early universe. The first one is you need a process that makes more particles than antiparticles. That's number one. The second one, though, is this condition known as CP violation. So CP stands for charge parity, which is a sort of symmetry that re relates matter to antimatter. It's kind of like a mirror. So what we're looking for are processes that violate this symmetry. And these B mesons that the questioner asked about, so these are particles which contain a beauty quark and another quark. You create one of these B mesons, and as it travels through your experiment, it oscillates. What you then do is you watch how often does it decay in the matter state and how often does it decay in the antimatter state? So this is the kind of key ingredient, one of the key ingredients we need to explain this mystery. 